Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. We have a very tight program, and everything is going to have to be down to the split second. And I may have to do the unpleasant and discourteous thing to one or two of our notables here in the event that we run a little long, because the, it's just uh, the strictest kind of a program that I've ever been involved in. As a matter of fact, I haven't been personally involved in any program <laughs> of this kind. I'm always the man behind the man behind the man. But uh, I've been persuaded to uh, forego my usual pri privileged sanctuary of anonymity. And uh, today I've had to forego that privilege, and I'm out in front to do uh, a very pleasant and uh, very moving piece of work. We are in a time of history. We are in a day of history. Perhaps it could be a turning point. We shall see. We shall hope. And now I shall call on Rabbi Silverman of the temple to do the invocation, please. Rabbi Silverman. Blessed art thou, Lord our God, King of the universe, who has kept us in life, who has sustained us, and who has permitted us to reach this sacred hour. Our God and our Heavenly Father, we ask thy benediction of love upon the President of the United States, upon his counselors and advisors, upon the judges and lawgivers, upon those who maintain the integrity and the justice of our nation. Breathe thou a measure of thy divine inspiration into our flag, that it may ever wave as a symbol of justice and freedom and brotherhood for all. We ask thy blessing upon our beloved Harry Truman, and upon his dear ones. We thank thee, dear God, for his dedicated spirit and the overwhelming love that gave impetus to the establishment of the Harry S. Truman Center for the advancement of peace. Shalom, peace, how precious is this concept, dear God, May it be translated into sublime reality. And we pray that the words of Scripture may find fulfillment so that Mitzion Tetze Torah, Udvar Adonai Mirushalayim, Rod of Zion shall go forth the law, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. And he shall judge between the nations and shall decide for many peoples. And they shall beat their swords into plowshares, and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. Shalom, peace. Make us the instruments of thy peace, servants of a dream, co-partners with thee in the building of a world of universal justice, of brotherhood, and peace for all, dear God, as we think together and meditate together this day. May the words of our mouths, the meditations of our hearts, the contributions of our minds, and the work of our hands be acceptable unto thee, O Lord our God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. I will now call on the Honorable Jose D. Inglis, Under Secretary for Foreign Affairs of the new Philippine government, who was sent here, who flew in here from the island to join us today 
on this very important and critical occasion. And I have a message here from his new president, Ferdinand DeMarcus. And I shall forego at this point uh, reading all of it, excepting just a few lines. Deeply appreciate your kind invitation to attend inaugural ceremonies. I'm sending the newly appointed Undersecretary for Foreign Affairs of the Philippines, the Honorable Jose de Inglis, as my personal representative at said inaugural ceremonies. I trust this arrangement will be satisfactory to you and the opening of the center to whose laudable purposes I heartily subscribe. Now, I think it's in order at this point, and it's very, very germane to the whole peace outlook, that I remind you of a very important statement made by President Truman at the time he advanced the uh, Declaration of Independence for the Philippines. And he did it ahead of schedule. And at the time he did it, he made these pronouncements. I had always been opposed to colonialism. Whatever justification may be cited at any stage, colonialism in any form is hateful to Americans. America fought her own war of liberation against colonialism. And we shall always regard with sympathy and understanding the desire of people everywhere to be free of colonial bondage. I wanted to see the brave Filipinos back on their feet and thriving as citizens of a free and successful republic. I had hoped that by making the Philippines as free as we had made Cuba, it would have an effect on British, Dutch, and French policy in their Far Eastern affairs. I still believe in Woodrow Wilson's philosophy of self-determination. And uh, now I shall call on the Honorable Jose Inglis to please deliver his message. Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the Philippines is deeply honored by the invitation to attend the inauguration of the Harry S. Truman Center for the Advancement of Peace and regrets his inability to come at this time. President Marcos has asked me to convey his warm and cordial greetings to this distinguished gathering. He wishes me in particular to extend his best wishes to President Truman. The Filipino people remember with gratitude that it was as President of the United States that Mr. Truman proclaimed the independence of the Philippines on July 4, 1946. It was subsequently that the scores of new nations in Asia and Africa became independent. And it is significant that this libertarian movement during the last two decades was spearheaded by the United States whose commitment to freedom is the mainstay of the free world and the hope of peoples everywhere is still struggling to be free. <coughs> to our mind, it is fitting that the Center for the Advancement of Peace should bear the name of the President who defined and honored the American purpose in Greece, in Berlin, and in Korea. The world has learned the lesson that without freedom or the will to fight for freedom, there can be no just and lasting peace. It is likewise a happy choice that the center should be established in the holy city of Jerusalem, where was preached the gospel, peace on earth, goodwill toward man. 
Man has perfected the techniques of war. He has even mastered the atom and conquered space. Surely man's ingenuity should be equal to the problem of developing the science of peace. To identify, analyze, isolate, and remedy or remove the causes of war. This is man's prime duty to himself before countless human lives are sacrificed further, before entire countries are again devastated, indeed before the world is engulfed in final holocaust. That is why President Marcos and with him the Filipino people subscribe wholeheartedly to the laudable purposes of the Harry S. Truman Center for the Advancement of Peace and wish it success for the sake of all mankind. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ambassador. I will now call upon another representative of a great people, great nation, and it happens to be another nation that soon followed the Declaration of Independence for the Philippines. <coughs> President Truman had also signed the birth certificate for the State of Israel, and the first ambassador was the now president of the Hebrew University, Dr. Eliyahu Ilat. He was also the first ambassador when later on Great Britain also recognized the State of Israel. It is an honor and a pleasure to say two things about this man. He's going to be our landlord, our keeper, and our general overseer, and our inspiration. We're delighted to call on him now. Ambassador Young. President Truman, Mrs. Truman, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Ambassador, Ambassador Luri, President Goldstein, ladies and gentlemen. Today is a great historic occasion. I have the honor and privilege to acknowledge on behalf of the Hebrew University of Jerusalem the establishment at the University of the Harry S. Truman Center for the Advancement of Peace. I wish to thank to my good friend Sam Rodberg and all the friends and admirers of President Truman and at the same time friends of the Hebrew University who made possible the realization of this great and noble idea. Their fruitful imagination and generosity in making possible the establishment of an institution for the study and dissemination of the means of advancing international cooperation and amity among the peoples of the world. The eternal city of Jerusalem is the cradle of the Jewish and Christian civilizations and the city from which the voice of peace and brotherhood was proclaimed by the prophet Isaiah and from which Christ sent a message of peace to his followers. The establishment of this center in the historic capital of Israel will signify another step towards the preservation of the noble heritage and the advancement of the great humanitarian mission which that city, holy to the world's three main faith, owes to people everywhere. The association of this center with the name of Harry S. Truman is both a recognition of his lifelong concern for and dedication to international peace and cooperation to which he as President of the United States of America made lasting contribution. It is also an expression of the profound respect and gratitude which the Jewish people everywhere, and we in Israel in particular, owe to the 32nd President of the United States who was responsible, as you heard, for his country's support of the new state of Israel before its proclamation of independence 
and during the most critical period of its fight for survival and progress. It was my good fortune as Israel's first envoy to this country to receive from President Truman the recognition by the United States of our new state only 11 minutes after the proclamation of our independence. This historic act of President Truman will remain from forever inscribed in golden letters in the 4,000 years history of our people. The name of President Truman will be remembered affectionately by the Jewish people with their long history of suffering and persecution, as well as hope and prayer on their road to ultimate restoration to the promised land of their fathers. Speaking personally, I never thought that almost 18 years after that historic day of 14th May 1948, I should be meeting President Truman again, this time in my humble capacity as President of the Hebrew University of Jerusalem, to express to him our deep feeling of pride and joy that the Center for the Advancement of Peace at our University should be known as the Harry S. Truman Center for the Advancement of Peace. The Truman Center will carry on studies and research in subjects relating to international relations, such as international law, comparative religion, political theory and philosophy, naturally with emphasis on problems of education. Special progress approach projects will draw on Israel's experience in social and cultural integration of plural communities from widely varying backgrounds. The center will endeavor to widen and deepen knowledge of various areas of human relationships the study of which will contribute both to the theoretical work of the center and to its practical implementation, especially in the field of relations with the newly emergent and developing nations in Asia and Africa. Israel, through her close cooperation with many Asian and African countries, has acquired considerable experience in this field, and further studies and projects will be initiated by the center related to the betterment of the conditions and progress in these countries. And last but not least, the Truman Center will endeavor to contribute to friendly relations and better understanding already happily existing between Israel and the American people. The name of President Truman will remain forever the source of inspiration for further strengthening of these relations between our two free democracies for the preservation of human liberties, peace, and security of the world. May I in conclusion wish you, Mr. President, and your gracious lady, good health, and many more years of happiness and fruitful life for the benefit of your own country and of humanity as a whole. I hope also that it will not be very long before we shall have the honor and the pleasure of welcoming you, Mr. President, and Mrs. Truman in our country and at our university, where you, Mr. President, will be able to see the center carrying your name in action and successfully fulfilling its objectives.
What he said in substance, he'd be very happy to be here with his old friend and associate, President Truman, excepting for the fact that Parliament is in session and he is engaging as of today in some pretty serious debates with him. So without any further ado, may I call on you, Mr. Allen. President, Mrs. Truman, Mr. Chairman, distinguished guests. As your chairman has mentioned, it is only the convening of the Canadian Parliament and his required presence for its important opening debate today which prevented our Prime Minister from being here personally. He would have relished especially the opportunity again to visit with an old and valued personal friend of his and of Canada and in whose name the new Center for the Achievement of Peace is being established in Jerusalem, and for whom he has the highest personal affection and esteem. The name of Harry S. Truman will long be remembered when issues of peace and war are discussed or appraised by historians. And it is particularly appropriate that his name should be linked in such a way with scholastic facilities designed to promote progress to, toward permanent peace, which uh, he has so much at heart and has supported throughout his whole life. I only briefly wish to therefore extend on behalf of the government of Canada our best wishes and congratulations to the sponsors and founders of the center. Canadians are keenly aware of the importance of the work which will be done and share the high hopes for the success of this endeavor. Thank you.